Welcome to Chapter 38 on Plastics Features. Plastics Features cover a range of functionality within SolidWorks, and some of the functionality is used in non-plastic applications as well. On this part, you can see right away we've got Draft, and Draft is also available within the Extrude Features, but sometimes it's more appropriate to apply Draft as a separate feature. We also have the Shell function, which is obviously not exclusively for plastics. Uh, you can do multi-thickness shells. You can shell out a part without removing any faces. So that would make a hollow part that would be appropriate for something like uh, roto-molding or something like that. We also have the rib feature, which has, has some great applications. There's two different methods for creating a rib. There's the plan view, basically, where you're looking at it from the top. And there's what I call the skyline view, where you can draw a shape for the top of a rib looking at it from the side. We can go to Insert Fastening Feature, and there's the Mounting Boss, which uh, allows you to create pin bosses and also screw bosses. Uh, screw bosses were added a little later on. Uh, you can get a snap hook for assembling parts and you can get a snap hook groove which is basically an undercut that the snap hook snaps into. The vent is kind of a wild feature. A lot of things you can do with that. I've seen that used on plastics and sheet metal actually. And there's the lip and groove feature for times when you have a multi-body situation and you want to make a groove on one body and a lip on the other for those to locate together more easily. There are other features as well. We've pointed to the draft, the shell, the rib. There's also the scale for scaling parts up or down, preparing for molding. And then there are other things that you'll find, like the split line to help you locate draft on a part. And then, of course, we also have the mold tools, which will be covered in Chapter 39. Let me go over a few of these features very quickly. And then we also have the master model tools, which would include the split and some of the, some of the multi-body functionality we find by right-clicking on solid bodies or on the solid body folder. Master model, as you'll remember, is the technique you use when you split a single body into multiple bodies and then publish those multiple bodies out to multiple parts that eventually come back together as an assembly. And those individual parts are very frequently employ plastic part design and modeling techniques. Let's take a look at this and try to make a couple of features. If I want to make a, a rib like we saw here in the middle, I can create a plane, first of all, that would represent the top of the rib. All right, and now on this plane, I can sketch the top of a rib. Now this could be a circular rib. This is also the kind of thing that you could do as a solid extrude but using the thin feature command. So, But here I'll use the rib just to show how this works. So the thickness could go all to one side, all to the other side, or split. You can add draft so that as it extrudes down it will get, uh, it'll get fatter. If you want to put more draft on one side than on the other, you're going to have to apply that separately because there are limitations to what the included draft function will do. And we have this extrusion direction, which doesn't apply so much with this sketch, but we'll, we'll use this later on. Uh, we can change the thickness overall, and this is automatically going to do what we would call an up to next type of extrude. Notice we don't have an end condition here because it's just extruding until it finds material. If you're trying to create a rib, but the edge of the material goes over like here so that the rib is hanging off, that's not going to work. The rib has to be able to work in an up to next type end condition. Now we've, uh, we've already got a plane that goes down through the middle, so let's take a look at that. And let's create another rib. This rib will allow us to create more of a shape on the side of the rib. So if you have a, a rib that needs some features, 
on it, you can set it up so it looks like that. And now we can use the rib again. Notice that this time the parallel to sketch extrusion direction is selected. We've got the same thickness options, all to one side, all to the other side, or split in the midplane. We've got uh, more draft. And let's, uh, let's exaggerate this a little bit. Okay, what it's doing is, it, in a situation like this, it's a little ambiguous where that draft is coming from. But uh, what you should be aware of, and what this really doesn't say very well, is that it's being drafted from the point that the arrow is attached to. So, actually, if you go up here to the top, the rib will get very skinny at a rate of 4 degrees. And that's what this next reference is all about. If you draft it from there, then the draft is going to increase, but at, a, at an angle, so that this end will be very skinny and this end will be very fat. So you don't want that either. You, you might want to set it up something like this, where you're specifying the thinnest part of the rib, or if you use the lowest reference the way it started out, this will help you specify the fattest part of the rib. If you want all of these to be consistent, well, that's a separate type of draft, and you'd have to turn off the internal draft here and use what we call parting line draft and that makes things look a little bit funny. Uh, we'll take a look at that a little later. Though. Okay, now what this does is, is it uh, since it's doing an up to next, it, it stopped when it got to the side of this other rib. So I can fix that by paying attention to what I'm doing and pull this back. As long as this line doesn't intersect the side of the rib, I should be good. And it still does, I think, so I'm going to pull it back. If you need some help with this, one thing that I will do frequently is use the intersection curve. And then you can, you can select uh, various faces of your model that allow you to see where the current sketch plane intersects the model. And, okay, so now I've done this. Now I can see where this all is. And uh, I'm going to grab some of these things here and convert them to construction geometry. Now I can see where the, the relationship between the existing model and my sketch for this rib is, I can see that a little more easily. Okay. Now you can see how the top of this rib is, is a variable thickness. So let's get back into that rib feature, turn off the draft, and I'm going to use a separate draft feature. Now this rib is just straight up and down. There's no draft on it. What I'm going to do is use what's called the parting line draft. And I'll, I'll bump this up to 4 degrees again so we can see it. Direction of pull is just going to be perpendicular to that face. The parting lines, I'll select all of these. Edges. Okay, so this means that the top of the rib is going to be same thickness all the way across. And when I say OK on this, it actually splits up the faces because on an angled face, the draft at the bottom is going to be more at the top than it is at the bottom of the angle, if that makes any sense. So as the rib gets taller, the bottom of the rib is is wider. Now I only drafted it on one side. I didn't draft the other side. That's just part of uh, part of the draft function. Here we're going to insert a fastening feature and a mounting boss. Now the mounting boss it used to not have the uh, the hardware what they call a hardware boss it used to just be the pin boss. 
And that was very frustrating because we had to actually use the pin boss to create our own uh, screw boss. But uh, what we need to do here is to select a position and then select a direction. Now, if you select a, uh, this selection box is, is if you have a boss on the corresponding body. So if you're actually working inside of a multi-body plastic part assembly and you want to, to locate this boss using the boss, the mating boss that would be on the other, coming down from the other part. In the book, we have an example of that so it's easier to, easier to visualize. The pin boss or the hardware boss doesn't preview going through the material, which is unfortunate because that's really what, uh, what it needs to do. Uh, we'll just make sure that it goes through when we're finished. And you've got all of these various things that you can set up for your fins, as well as the boss itself. This is the one that allows you to set up the direction of your fins um, and, and the number of the fins as well. You can establish the thickness, which would be this B number that's a little thin right now and uh, the draft amount, every, every little thing that you can establish on here. And once you get something like that set up, I encourage you to use the favorites to name the favorite and to save it out. That way you can use the favorite on, in other places. Okay, so once, once we've got all of that set up, we'll say okay and we'll look at it from the other side. SOLIDWORKS did remember to put the hole all the way through. Okay, so thank you very much. That's just an introduction to some of the uh, plastic type features that you'll find in SOLIDWORKS. I hope you'll find this chapter informative and interesting.